So, uh, you know, about four months into that schedule, I started to, like, I don't, I started to lose it. You know, because there's only so little sleep you can get, and, and uh, I would not recommend that to anybody. Uh, but that's just the way it worked out, and um, you know, not complaining. Good problems to have. Yes. Who is your all-time favorite author? Ooh. Um, well, my all-time favorite author. It's hard. It's hard. It's like asking, "What's your favorite movie?" You know, I, I, I don't have one. I mean, I know that's a that's a sort of a, a cheap way out, I guess, of answering a question. I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you this. I, I nowadays I read. Um, uh, uh, nonfiction history and biographies a lot uh, for pleasure. I don't know why. I just, you know, everything that uh, uh, David McCall is up there. He's up there. Um, now, on the other side of my personality, um, uh, you know, and I know this would not go over well with like the literati crowd, but everything that I read between the age of 10 and hmm, 16 was by Stephen King. Every single book I read. Now, you know, that, I am an unabashed, unapologetic Stephen King lover. I'm an apologist. I've read everything he's ever written. Um, you know, I grew up idolizing him. My dad had a used and rare bookstore, and uh, every birthday, and I hated it at the time, but I love it now, every birthday what I would get was a first edition hardcover Stephen King book. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad, right? Um, and uh, I just, I couldn't get enough. I loved that universe that he uh, created. Um, it scared me. It inspired me to want to write my own little short stories. And, you know, and that's just, you know, that's just the first, uh, you know, um, author that I found. So uh, it's hard to say. I don't know. It changes from time to time. But those, in, in terms of the people that are influential on me, th those two are pretty high up on the list. What's your favorite movie and your favorite movie soundtrack? What did I just finish saying? <laughs> All right. Favorite movies. Oh, boy. <laughs> New Moon. Yeah. Aliens. Uh, yeah, the 1986 James Cameron version. Uh, yeah. Just because I love this. I, when I was a kid, I saw that, and I loved the way the, the guns sounded in that movie. When they fire the machine guns, you know, there's some weird sound. Um, I... Uh, I love, see, I went to film school, so, you know, I mean, I'm supposed to say, like, Citizen Kane, and, uh, you know, which is a great movie, by the way, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, but uh, the movies that really affected me as a kid, not to double down on the Stephen King thing, but Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of The Shining, I mean, that movie just got under my skin when I was a kid and did not let go, and it's one of those movies I have to watch every single year. Um, uh, the, uh, the original Night of the Living Dead, George Romero's 1968, black and white, scratchy, beautiful masterpiece. Um, just a, just a really incredibly fun movie. Um, it, you know, it's hard to say. Um, uh, uh, what was that movie that Carrot Top was in? <laughs> Chairman of the Board. Uh, oh, my favorite movie soundtrack ever? This I actually do have an answer for, and it's weird, and I can't, I, I don't know why, but this, this one score by uh, James Newton Howard for a very little scene movie called Snow Falling on Cedars. Anyone remember this movie? Yeah, great book also, but I didn't read the book, so it, they didn't have a soundtrack for the book, otherwise, you know. Um, uh, for some reason, if you guys have a chance to, to listen to that Snow Falling on Cedars soundtrack, um, James Newton Howard, it is so uh, haunting and beautiful, and uh, I, that, I st I've written to that for 10, 12 years now consistently, and, and I'll never get tired of it. Do you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, yeah, that was a show I was, I was into, um, and, uh, uh, you know, um, I mean, I'm just a big... Joss Whedon fan, you know? Yeah. Gotta love Joss. Uh, so yes, yes, but, uh, in, uh, but not really to the point that it influences uh, Abe at all. I think. Although maybe, what about a, a Buffy book? 
How cool would that be if Abe teamed up with Buffy? <laughs> All right, let me think about that. In your book, how many vampires does Lincoln kill, and which one was his best kill? Wow. Um, I lost count. I don't know. He kills a bunch of them. I mean, it's got to be dozens of them. Um, I mean, when he's really, I mean, I, I think we don't even hear about all, we just sort of hear secondhand about all the, uh, when he travels the circuit, when he's a prairie lawyer, you know, at that point of his life when he's, you know, he's in his 20s and he's rugged, more rugged than ever and strong and uh, confident and his axe throwing uh, is at its finest. Um, he, he, he's just killing vampires all up and down uh, Illinois. Uh, all up and down the Sangamon, you know, just killing them, killing them. Um, he, uh, I don't know how many, it's dozens, it's dozens. And the best kill, I forget the name, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a shoemaker um, that he gets a word from Henry early on that, you know, Henry Sturges, his mentor, you'll read in the book, um, sends Abe out on these errands. Henry has a list of vampires who uh, are bad vampires and he sends his uh, number one assassin, Mr. Lincoln, out to uh, dispatch with them. Um, to, uh, to, uh, 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 he, and there's this one where he's just, he's so weary uh, from killing vampires and he's so sick and tired of all the killing he's been doing, he gets a name from Henry and he literally, this guy is a shoemaker in, uh, in a little small town up on the, uh, off the, the Sangamon and he just opens the door and he walks in <laughs> And the guy's sitting there, like, you know, putting a shoe together, and he looks up, and Abe just cuts his head off, and then walks out. <laughs> I mean, he's had it. I don't know. That, to me, was like that moment in Indiana Jones where, you know, the guy's, you know, doing the swords and the whole thing, and then he's just, you know. <laughs> yes? So, speaking of Henry, would you consider him a traitor to the vampire race, since he serves as Lincoln's protector? Well, uh, from some vampire standpoints, you see, the, the, in the book, you'll see uh, the, the vampire, there are, there are a small band of, of vampires who are, um, who are friends of man. They believe in coexisting with mankind. They believe that they can feed on what they call the sick and the wicked. Um, and there are plenty of those, as we know, to go around for, for vampires. Now, there's a much larger group of vampires who uh, have come over from Europe and see this opportunity in America, thanks to our pre-existing evil institution of slavery, uh, to take advantage of that, not only to feed on slaves without fear of remorse, uh, without uh, fear of reprisal, rather, but to not only, but that to it, it grow the institution of slavery to the point where they enslave all of mankind, and we basically become uh, what they say is like the cattle of the gods, all of us. And uh, this small band of vampires, led by Henry Sturges, our, uh, our friend and mentor, um, calls itself the Union. Uh, yes, the, the themes are screaming pretty loudly here at this point. You know, it's, you know we've left subtlety behind now uh, in this, in this uh, part of the book. Um, so, you know, from a standpoint of, uh, from my standpoint, no. Henry is, uh, he's not a traitor to the vampire kind, race. Um, uh, but uh, there are a lot of vampires who disagree, and then that leads, unfortunately, to a conflict uh, called the Civil War. Where do you think that vampires came from? Were they around before Lincoln started slaying them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a part of the book that deals uh, with uh, Henry's origin uh, that goes back beyond uh, the Roanoke colony and that mysterious disappearance. Um, yes, it's because of vampires. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, in fact, we, I think there's even a part of the book where you know Henry wonders about where vampires come from. Some people think that vampires and man sort of evolved as two different you know, species. One gifted with superior numbers, but weak, us, and one uh, inferior in numbers, but gifted with all these wonderful qualities like immortality and uh, superpowers and all that. 